So Sun Tzu's quote here is just as applicable today as it was when he wrote it over 2,600 years ago. Now it tells me that we need to surprise without being surprised. So on October 4th, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, a satellite consisting of a metal sphere a little larger than a basketball, containing four whip antennas and a radio transmitter. Sputnik took the country by surprise. And this was not a welcome surprise at the time because the launch demonstrated the capability of the Soviet Union to deliver nuclear weapons using intercontinental ballistic missiles during an intense period of the Cold War. And really, why was this so surprising? After all, we, we knew how to launch a satellite. What we didn't really expect was that we didn't expect anybody else who could do so. And why was that? Well, a failure of intelligence and also of imagination, I suppose. Sputnik is certainly not the first strategic surprise, nor the last, but it is prominent in DARPA's history because it is the, the strategic surprise that ignited the formation of the agency. DARPA was formed in 1958 with the sole mission to prevent strategic surprise. Now what is shown here in this chart is the memo that created DARPA. It is only one and a half pages long, with one signature. Now I really wonder how many pages today and signatures would be required even with the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1995. <laughs> well, we figured out pretty quickly that we had to create surprise in order to prevent it. And of course, you may ask, what has DARPA created over its 58 years? Well, Martha kindly mentioned the uh, ARPANET, which became the internet. And really in the late 60s, DARPA had the vision to invest in making computers talk to each other. And Martha provided these various <coughs> protocols. As a, as a network. Well, there's been more since that time, and this is just a summary of a few. Well, on the left side, you have the Saturn V rocket that uh, took us to the moon. And then on the far lower right, you have actually foundational technologies for Apple's Siri that grew out of a program called Personalized Assistant That Learns, or PAL. Now, it's a nice name, but it, I have to admit Siri is a lot better. So it is evident that DARPA's technological surprises have disrupted commercial markets as well as military tactics and strategies. So let's come back now to Sun Tzu and the art of surprise. Sun Tzu understood the importance of time. If I take more time to complete my mission than it takes for an adversary to defeat me, then I'm at a great disadvantage. I need to execute my loop of seeing, understanding, acting, and finishing quicker than it takes an adversary to execute theirs. In cyberspace, computers operate on nanosecond timelines with billions to trillions of operations per second. In order to prevail in this space, humans cannot be in the loop, but must partner with a machine that executes the loop under human supervision, which does include the constraints built in by human designers. This partnership is actually happening today with algorithmic trading. The revolution in trading at machine speeds is the transition from humans operating the trading loops shown on the left side of the chart to traders supervising the loops being executed by algorithms running on computers shown on the right side of the chart. I will now describe two programs from our cyber portfolio where quickness is the essence. We are using automation to engage cyber attackers in machine time rather than human time. One DARPA program that epitomizes this approach is as shown here, the Cyber Grand Challenge, with the objective of automating what human hacker teams do in DEF CON's Capture the Flag competition, which is the world's premier tournament for computer hackers. Automation developed under the challenge includes discovery of software vulnerabilities and their patching. Over a year ago, the number of competitors in the challenge was reduced to a set of seven finalists from a starting field of over 100. The top of this chart shows the seven high-performance computers that house the cyber reasoning systems or bots developed by each one of the seven teams. These bots met head-to-head -head in the first machine versus machine variant of the Capture the Flag tournament held at the beginning of DEF CON this year in Las Vegas. It really was a great success. We had a first prize of $2 million, 
that went to a startup from Carnegie Mellon University. Second prize of $1 million went to a team composed of the company Gramatech and a group from the University of Virginia. And third prize went to the University of California, which was $750,000, and this is at Santa Barbara, and their team was Shellfish. All seven teams are shown at the bottom of the chart, along with the DARPA program manager for Cyber Grand Challenge, Mike Walker. It's just worth noting two highlights from the event. First, all seven bots or cyber reasoning systems automatically scanned, monitored, patched and defended against unknown code for 96 rounds over eight hours. There was only one partial system failure and actually it was with the winning bot and it managed to recover. It really is a testimony to the resiliency of these systems. And second, and I'd say even most important, is that software flaws last minutes, not years. For example, one bot found a software vulnerability unknown to humans in one round, and then three rounds later, a second bot uploaded a patch to this vulnerability in a lapsed time of only 15 minutes. To those who know cybersecurity, this is a tremendous game changer, this reduction of the timeline of finding vulnerabilities and their patching. For those of you who are interested in learning more about the challenge, there's a website dedicated to it, and just go to cybergrandchallenge.com. This chart shows that quickness can be seen to be going 140 miles per hour with the transmission still in park. Pretty good. Well, that's not really the case, of course. That's the result of a successful cyber attack against the embedded software in an automobile. Our High Assurance Cyber Military Systems Program, or HACMS program, is working to protect the embedded software in commercial and military systems against such attacks. And embedded software, you'll find, of course, is all over the Internet of Things. We use formal methods to ensure that software is built as specified, that it is correct by construction. And given that so much of the cyber playing field is software, we aim to use the HACMS technologies to deny adversaries the opportunity to even get onto this field. So coming back to Sun Tzu and the art of surprise. Now, extraordinary is a relative term which has different meanings depending who you talk to. Our office at DARPA is centered on cyber, information, and human-machine symbiosis. And we recognize that people today work extensively with cyber and cyber-physical systems like smartphones, the internet, or automobiles. And as a consequence, we see artificial intelligence, or AI, as the extraordinary. This AI is not just the expert systems of an earlier generation, but today's machine learning and tomorrow's contextual adaptation. Almost every day we read about advances in machine learning, whether it be another self-driving vehicle or the latest victory in ever more complex games like AlphaGo. AI based on machine learning is dependent on the data needed to train it. The next wave of AI, contextual adaptation, strives towards more capable intelligence in being able to recognize new situations and adapt to them with little to no a priori training data. Now, three DARPA events, Grand Challenges 1 and 2, and Urban Challenge, over the period of 2004 to 2007, played very pivotal roles in accelerating the development of self-driving vehicles using machine learning technology. The progress from challenge to challenge was truly stunning. No team got further than a few miles in the first Grand Challenge. And then a little more than a year later in the second Grand Challenge, five self-driving vehicles completed a difficult 132-mile course in the desert. And finally, in the Urban Challenge, six self-driving vehicles finished a complex 60-mile urban course that included traffic kindly provided by Hollywood stunt drivers using leased vehicles. Well, there's been a lot of progress in and data collected for self-driving vehicles since 2007. And today, we have Google self-driving car along with others. The technical risks associated with these vehicles are being reduced to the point where ethics, legal, policy, and insurance issues are emerging as the remaining barriers to be overcome. I will now outline two programs that explore the extraordinary domain of artificial intelligence. 
This chart shows that machine learning AI can be incorrect. Today, this AI is not able to explain how it arrived at its conclusion in a human understandable manner other than providing a probability. Consider the leftmost case shown here. The machine learning system identified this image as a digital clock with 80% probability, pretty good probability. I guess we can see why it came to this conclusion, but it's incorrect. And the situation just gets worse for the two other cases shown here. So we have started at DARPA a new program called Explainable AI to develop a new generation of machine learning techniques that are able to provide a rationale that explains conclusions that are reached. If current trends continue, future autonomous systems will need to perform increasingly complex and sensitive missions, and machine learning AI will be a critical part of such systems. However, if developers, users, and senior leaders are to feel confident enough to deploy and use AI-aided systems, then these systems must explain their rationale, and their recommendations, decisions, and actions must be delivered in a manner that human users understand and trust. Today, most machine learning systems provide no explanations, or the explanations they do provide are too detailed and at the wrong level of abstraction. The new program will develop the tools needed to build explainable AI systems. So being able to explain is certainly a very important part of communication. And Siri, shown here along with others, are great first steps towards a more natural way of communicating with computers. But we have a long way to go before we can talk with a computer like we can with another person. Take the example shown here. What are Siri's possible replies? It could be perhaps the location of an Italian restaurant near where I can buy wine, or maybe a store where I can buy wine and lasagna. Well, the list of possibilities certainly can increase, and I'm sure many of you have had a similar frustrating experience with these systems. The Communicating with Computers program aims for more symmetric communication between people and computers, where a computer is not there to merely take orders, but to be a partner able to collaborate through the natural modes of language, gesture, and facial expression. People exchange complex ideas very efficiently using ambiguous words within a shared context. Consider the following example. A person picks up three wooden blocks and stacks them one on top of each other, then turns to another person and says, quote, add one more. People get this effortlessly, but today's computers would fail miserably. The Communicating with Computers program aims to make it possible for a computer to talk with a person like two people do, in which an ambiguous phrase like, add one more, is understood by the computer within the context it shares with its human partner. Coming back to Sun Tzu and the art of surprise. Even Sun Tzu worried about big data and data analytics. Pretty good, 2,600 years ago. Of course, what has changed is the amount of data to be calculated, as well as the machines we use to perform the calculations. Now, over the next few years, global data generation is headed towards an astounding 44,000 exabytes, where an exabyte is a one followed by 18 zeros. Now, that's an astronomical number that is very difficult to get one's head around. I do try to make an attempt by drawing a thin white line on the rightmost circle, which is intended to represent only a few exabytes, which are considered equivalent to all the words ever spoken by humanity stored as text. Now, that doesn't include what's been spoken here today. I'll, I'll caveat that. <laughs> so I would like to now just describe three of our programs that use data and calculations to win. DARPA is very active in the development of open source software tools for a range of applications such as those shown here for machine learning, which is a heavy user of data, and data science in general. On the left side of the chart is shown the uh, results from the program called Probabilistic Programming for Advancing Machine Learning, or PAML for short. And it is working to make it easier to develop algorithms like lane finding for self-driving vehicles. Unfortunately, even as demand for these capabilities is accelerating, Every new application requires a Herculean effort. Teams of hard-to-find experts are needed to build expensive custom tools that are often painfully slow and can perform unpredictably 
when using large complex data sets. The PAML program aims to overcome these challenges, where probabilistic programming is a new programming paradigm that manages data, uncertain data, and information. And using probabilistic programming languages, the program seeks to A, greatly increase the number of people able to build successful machine learning applications, and B, make machine learning experts radically more effective. The program also seeks to create economical, robust, and powerful applications that actually use less data for more accurate results, features inconceivable with today's machine learning technology. The right side of this chart shows the um, open, DARPA Open Catalog entry for the Xdata program, which is building an extensive collection of open source software tools for data science. We have started a new program called Data Driven Discovery of Models that will build on the Xdata library and make it even more accessible to non experts in data science. Now, to find the catalog, just Google DARPA Open Catalog. Now, many data analyses start by looking for correlations. And I think we recognize that correlations can be misleading. Take, for example, shown here. There's a high 0.993 correlation between the per capita consumption of margarine in the United States and the divorce rate in the state of Maine. <laughs> now, um, a, clearly a spurious correlation, but it's one that should be a word of caution. And we uh, certainly recognize that, I think it was stated earlier, correlation does not automatically imply causation. Very important caveat. But we have started to look more deeply into the generation of causal explanatory models from data, information, and knowledge. So imagine a machine able to read all the books in a library and then automatically transforming this information into relevant causal explanatory models. Imagine the cure to cancer scattered across all the books in this library and then using such a machine to find the cure. Big mechanisms are large explanatory models of complicated systems in which interactions have important causal effects. Now, while the collection and analysis of data is becoming more automated, the creation of big mechanisms remains a human endeavor challenged by the fragmented and distributed nature of knowledge. To the extent that the construction of big mechanisms can be automated, it truly would change the way analysis, let alone science, is done. The Big Mechanism program is developing technologies to read thousands of research abstracts and papers, extract pieces of causal mechanisms from these papers, assemble these pieces into more complete causal models, and then reason over these models to provide explanations. The domain focus for the program is actually cancer biology, with particular emphasis on the complex signaling pathways associated with the RAS protein. This is a very challenging problem, useful in driving development of the big mechanism technologies. So I've talked about Sun Tzu's quickness within the context of our cyber portfolio. His extraordinary in terms of artificial intelligence and human machine symbiosis, and his calculations as seen in our programs on data analytics and causal explanatory models. Of course, these mappings are not unique, and all three elements pervade our programs. Mastery of quickness, the extraordinary, and calculations drive us to know the enemy and ourselves, and thereby surprise without being surprised. Thank you. <laughs>